What's up, everybody? Josh Osborne here from Osborne and McCarty. Uh, I wanted to get up my UFC uh, 111 post-fight video. Uh, I'm going to keep it kind of quick. Uh, this has been a, a long weekend, a fun weekend. Uh, yesterday I tested uh, for another belt in karate. Uh, passed it first on my class. Thank you very much. Uh, obviously, last night we had UFC 111, and today uh, is my daughter uh, Lily's birthday. We have family out, so I need to hang out with them today and don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, but I definitely wanted to get something up for you guys. Um, Interesting card. Um, I want to go over a few of the fights that we did not cover in our predictions video and then some that we did. Uh, the first one that stuck out to me was uh, Ricardo Almeida versus Matt Brown. Wow. Uh, Almeida, man. Pfft. Guy's looking pretty good. Um, he had that four-year absence where you know he kind of stepped away from MMA. He's back with a vengeance. He wasn't looking good the first couple fights, but he's definitely uh, stepped it up a notch. You want to keep an eye on this guy for sure. Um, Matt Brown is a very talented fighter, really brings it, has looked great in his last couple fights, but he was just totally outclassed uh, by Almeida in this one in just every area of the game. He wasn't winning the fight for a second. But, you know, Almeida, I'd like to see his, his competition level get brought up a notch and just see what he's capable of. But uh, I'm definitely excited for what's to come for that guy. Definitely keep an eye on him. Uh, next fight, Nate Diaz, Rory Markham. Really, really impressed with Nate Diaz. He looked great at, uh, I guess it's technically middleweight, because Markham did not make weight. But uh, Diaz has moved up to welterweight, so next time we see him fight, it'll be in the, the 170 range. But he looked really good, had some meat on his bones, looked like he had a little more power to his punches. And it looked like he had more energy. It just um, every, every area of the game, the ground game, the stand-up, was very effective. He's looking more and more like his brother, Nick Diaz, which is definitely a good thing. I, I love the, the different angles that he's coming from. And I love how all of his shots are not knockout punches. They're just effective. And, you know, add them up over, you know, a round or two of just getting peppered with shots in the face. It's going to wear on the guy. And it definitely uh, wore on Mark. And you could see his face start to get uh, all bruised and, and bloodied. And then Diaz was able to, you know, knock him down to the ground and almost get the submission. I was close on my prediction, but it ended up being a TKO. So uh, congrats to, to Nate Diaz. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what he can do at welterweight. Uh, next fight I want to talk about, John Fitch, Ben Saunders. I would have loved to see Fitch versus Alves too. Too bad that didn't happen, but Alves, as you know, got um, uh, didn't get a medical clearance because he had some sort of uh, brain situation going on. I, I don't know exactly all the details. and will probably find out here in the next couple of days. But uh, no big surprises here with uh, Fitch and Saunders. Um, I think the biggest surprise for me was how uh, Saunders was so easily taken down. I know Fitch has got great takedowns, but Ben Saunders being tall, I thought he'd be able to stay on his feet a little bit more and try to work that more tight. But uh, congrats to, to Fitch to just canceling out his his stand up game and just putting him against the fence. I like the takedowns; it's pretty interesting. You know, he'd clinch with him, put him up against the cage, and then lift him up, turn him away from the cage, and then just kind of flip him on his back. And Saunders just didn't know what to do with it. Um, it's almost like Fitch was using his his height against him. I don't know. It, it seemed pretty effective though. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, Fitch, uh, his fights are a little bit uh, boring, i got to be honest. I mean, it's, it's nothing new. His, his fights have always kind of gone this way. They're just very predictable. It's all about the takedowns in wrestling and usually goes to decision. And, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to take anything away from Fitch. A win is a win. It's, it's effective. It's working for him. But it, it might be another scenario where Fitch needs, you know, to rattle off six, seven wins, maybe even eight to get that title shot again, kind of like his original situation. You know, the UFC is all about exciting fights, and I don't know. I just It's it's kind of getting to be the same old, same old with, with Fitch every time we see him. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to disrespect him, but they're, they're trying to sell, you know, tickets and pay-per-views, and fights like that are good to someone who's educated in that area, but it's not the fight that's going to bring new fans uh, to MMA and, and UFC. So I don't know what the UFC is going to do about that. Uh, ben Saunders obviously isn't ready for the big time. We'll give him a couple more warm-up fights, but um, I wouldn't count that guy out at all. Once he works on that takedown defense where he can keep on his feet and get that clinch, he's going to be a dangerous fighter. But uh, he's still young, definitely an up-and-comer. Um, next fight, this is the one that I, I did miss on my prediction. I went 3-1, uh, and one. did not get this one right. I had uh, Carwin Mir, I picked Mir submission, and wow. Whew. Most exciting fight, in my opinion, just because of the, the fireworks, but... Carwin freaking worked Mir, man. He, he, he got him up against the cage, and I've never seen somebody hit such powerful shots uh, in the clinch like that, especially against a huge guy like Mir. Mir was just overpowered, you know, and 
and, and Carwin finished Mir way quicker than Brock Lesnar did, so I'm actually pretty excited for, for Carwin and Lesnar. I still think Lesnar has a little bit of an edge, but this is going to be his toughest test for sure. And Carwin, man, just keeping the streak alive. He's 13-0 and now, all knockouts, all in the first round. That is pretty impressive. I mean, I, I didn't want to put too much uh, into to Carwin just because a lot of those uh, knockouts were against kind of low-level competition in, in the smaller farm leagues. But now he's doing it against just elite competition like Mir and Gonzaga and looking really, really good. Excited about this guy. He's got a good attitude. I think he's probably going to be the fan favorite going against Lesnar after the, you know, the Lesnar-Carwin face-off last night. I was surprised how many people are still booing Lesnar. But um, <laughs> I don't know. That's, it's definitely going to be probably the best fight of the year, at least when it comes to, to heavyweight. So looking forward to that one later this year. Uh, let's go to uh, main event, George St. Pierre, Dan Hardy. Um, don't want to talk too much about this fight. You know, it, it, there wasn't anything that I didn't already predict would happen. You know, I, I looked over my wife and I'm like, get ready to see Dan Hardy put on his butt about 5,000 times. That's exactly what happened. You know, one thing that did surprise me was how much heart that Dan Hardy showed. It was pretty impressive that he didn't tap uh, in those submissions and was able to get out of them. I mean, that arm bar was ridiculous. It was totally hyperextended. Rolled right out of it. Um, haven't seen something that good since Rich Franklin and Travis Luter, where Franklin was able to roll out. But very impressive nonetheless. Uh, and Dan Hardy's definitely going to be a beast of a fighter against other guys at welterweight. But GSP, man, what can you say? He's just on another level. And like Rogan said last night, you know, who is going to stop that guy's takedowns in wrestling? There's just nobody. At 170 right now, absolutely nobody. And, you know, I would like to see GSP go up at 185, maybe fight Silva. I don't know if he wants to do that. He might feel like he's going to be the smaller guy if that matchup does actually happen. But 170 right now, he could probably just hang out there for a couple of years and just keep wiping guys off the map, you know, with, with the, the takedowns. And um, one thing I did want to talk about, too, is GSP is in a little bit of a, a predicament because of his last couple of fights all kind of playing out the same way. You know, no disrespect again. You know, it's it's a win, it's effective, he's dominant, maybe the most dominant champion in UFC history, definitely most welterweight, uh, dominant welterweight uh, in UFC history. But UFC is all about selling freaking pay-per-views and, and tickets and selling those fights, and, you know, the fights are just going the same way every time he's kind of playing it safe. I mean, a lot of people would know, after watching his last, you know, eight, nine fights, that when he got knocked out by Sarah, man, it, it just changed him up. And he'll stand a little bit, but you can definitely tell he never closes the distance to exchange punches. It's always to shoot in for a takedown. So he's a little gun shy, and you know maybe he'll keep doing that for the rest of his fights. Maybe you know the UFC will talk to him and try to get him to make it a little more exciting. I don't know how that whole thing works, but coming from a fan's perspective and, and coming from somebody that's trying to bring friends over and get them into MMA, whenever it hits the ground and he's you know stays in, in full guard most of the time. You know, he is working there. He's definitely working down on the ground. He's not a lay in prayer or anything like that. But I don't know. It's just not that exciting. I think Anderson Silva kind of had a, a similar situation. Not on the ground so much. He was trying to avoid the ground and played it really safe for two or three fights. And people were starting to boo Anderson Silva. And people were talking about how they were, you know, done being his fan. And then he gets a fight against Forrest Griffin, who just, you know, always throws the balls to the wall. Knocks out Forrest Griffin in super impressive fashion. Now everybody's back on the Anderson Silva train and obviously looking forward to the Damian Maya fight coming up. But GSP might need to do something like that. You know, really go out on his next fight, take some chances, and, you know, solidify, you know, your position as the most dominant pound-for-pound uh, pound fighter in the world and, and put on a show, you know. And um, I don't know. You, you guys let me know what you think about uh, my thoughts on that. No disrespect to GSP. You know, it's, it's no... Uh, Secret that I'm not a huge fan of his. I think he's an amazing fighter, supreme athlete, all that. But I'm just talking about, uh, you know, coming from a fan's perspective and maybe from somebody that's new to the sport, seeing the same kind of game plan over and over again. So I want to hear your thoughts. Um, one side note, we got the next fight night coming up in three days, another UFC event. Uh, Florian Gomi, and I'm actually in the process of uploading uh, the video to YouTube as we speak. So definitely watch that video, guys. Not the best fight night in history, but there's some good uh, matchups on there. Definitely looking forward to it. And uh, we'll get the boys back for the next UFC event uh, when that comes up. And that will be Abu Dhabi, UFC 112, Damian Maya, Anderson Silva. But you guys have a great day. Thank you very much for watching my video. Please comment on it, and we will catch you uh, next time on the next video. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.